Hey, g'day guys, it's Adam from Video Show Me How. And in today's video, we are working on the D-Max and more specifically, we're continuing the stereo build. We've just come off the back of installing the Halo 11 Alpine unit. So if you haven't seen that video, I'll link it up the top here or in the video description down below. So go and check that one out. We're building on that now. And the next step is to add some bass to the whole systems. And I've gone with a Kicker Hideaway HS10. This is their 10 inch version of their Hideaway subs. Now I picked this guy up from Outback Equipment via their online store. They've got stacks and stacks of stuff over there. Nice and easy to deal with. So I'll make sure I link in the video description the details of that one. But then also any other gear that we use in this video, as always, I'll make sure I chuck a link in the video description. So in this video, we're going to get stuck into installing this into the D-Max. It is absolutely a DIY job, this one. They're designed to be nice and simple to install. So I think the only thing that we need to add is a second one because it's the D-Max and one of them just won't do. So we're gonna be installing two of these guys, linking them together to get two 10 inch subs under some seats and get some sound, a bit of a kick. But enough jibber jabber, let's get started. And here we go, here's everything that you get in the box. We basically get our wiring harness here with our connector straight into the sub. We've got our miscellaneous bits and pieces, even ring terminals and what have you. We've got our inline fuse with the built-in 15 amp fuse there as well. We've got some brackets that we're gonna to use to bolt to the bottom of the sub itself. We've got our 3.5 mil that goes into our little gain control, our base level. We've got a pretty cool spot. We're gonna stick these guys to make it look nice and factory. We've got some instructions and then of course the sub itself. And when it comes to installing this guy, you've got to kind of make a call on how you want to get the signal from your head unit out into your sub or subs. The first way is using your speakers themselves, your rear left and your rear right, to get a to sort of tap into and get the signal out of those, hence why we've got a grey wire and a white wire, to then use that into our harness which then connects into our subs themselves. And then the second way is to use some RCA connectors out of your head unit into your sub. And normally that's the way you'd use it if you were gonna go into a separate amp and then out of the amp into a dedicated sub and enclosure. So I reckon without further ado, let's get all of this guy all bundled up. Let's get it over into the D-Max so we can get cracking on the install. Now when it comes to installing into the car, of course in our case we're using the 21 Plus D-Max, it's really gonna depend on where you wanna actually locate the subs. There are a couple options when it comes to the rear seat and in the back of dual cabs, and in our case, the D-Max, there are some options to getting it behind the seats. Now for me, I use this for all sorts of different storage for day trip stuff. So I've got some, some uh, chairs in here, jacks and what have you. We've got jack bases here and that sort of stuff. So you could always put it on the back wall here. There isn't a whole lot of room here and depending on the, the thickness, sort of what sort of gap you've got in the back of your rig, uh, will sort of define on whether you can put it there. I have seen that done in D-Maxes though, so you do have that option. For me though, I'm gonna be installing it under our front seats. And in our case, we're gonna be putting one under both of our front seats. So if you are installing into a 21 plus D-Max, this is what you're gonna to need to do. There will be a little trim piece, looks a little bit like this. So all you need to do Let's just pull your mat out of the way if you've got it. That will just pull straight off. You can see there's just the little clips on the top here and down the bottom. That will just pull straight up and out and it will look a little bit like that once you're done. There will be these little clips that sit in there and you can see how they kind of clip together. You just need to pull up on the end here and open that out so you can access the loom. Recommend doing it on the back one here and there's a whole bunch of wires here, including some really weird kind of connections here. I'm not sure what those are. Let me know in the comments if you know what that's for. But the ones that we want are our red and white wires. There's no strip on them. They're just straight red and white and they are a twisted pair. So you'll notice they are twisted like that all the way through, so you can't miss them. That's the ones that powers, in our case, the driver's side powers our rear right speaker and on our passenger side that we'll have a look at in just a sec. So that's our next step. We need to connect these in line for our sub on this side. And then if we head on over to the passenger side, you'll see that it's very similar. Same sort of story, same trim piece. So we just clip the end pieces off. We can lift that whole section up. Looks a little bit like that. We can move our car mats out of the way. And as you can see, very similar, just less wires. Find the loom there as well. We need to locate our red and whites here again. I've already snipped these in preparation. You can see 
that's what they look like. They are that twisted pair. So same story as on the right hand side. That is the white part of our loom sitting over there. We need to run that over and connect it in line with our two speakers here. So snip these guys and then connect it back together except wiring in the rear left part of our new loom. And here we go. So we're over on the passenger side. This is what this looks like. You can see with our little clip here, you just push down and fold up. That's what sort of holds the carpet in. It just clips in and out like that. So we can just compress and pull. And then here's our red and white on this side as well. You can see we're able to just tap into those. We can double up our wire, signal wire coming out one side, red for red and white for white. Now in our case, with our new bit of wire here, our black strip is our negative and the solid white is our positive. So similarly on here, the red wire is your positive and the factory white wire is your negative. So you just gotta line those up and you should have it looking a little bit like that where they're nice waterproofed and solder joins all in one. So I highly recommend those. Now once all the connections are made for our signal wires, and in our case, we've split these out into both looms, from there, we need to come over and we should have our big red wires left. This is our power wire, and we need to snake this around to our front, underneath our passenger seat at the front there, where there's a grommet to get through to the engine bay. And if you've watched any of my other videos, you'll be pretty well versed in this part. There is a, a grommet that lives just down in there, and that's where you can sneak out the red wire, and that's what's gonna come across to our battery to hook up to our 12 volt power. From here, we just need to grab our little inline fuses, connect those into your power lead here in the same way that we join those other wires, and then put a ring terminal on the other side and connect it up to your positive terminal. Just leave those fuses out so a circuit's not live. So here we go, we're all wired up at the front here. We've got our two connectors here, fuses out for the moment. Gonna have to do something about this. We've got our tray and we've got a new little 12 volt distribution box coming, so that'll be in a future video. Now I've come around the back here and you can see that this is kinda our state of play. So once you're at this stage, you're ready to go. It's a matter of grabbing the rest of our kit. We'll get our subs ready to go and we'll start working out how we're gonna mount them. Now as far as mounting the subs, we've got a couple of different options. We do have our little brackets here that come included and they're designed to sit on there just like that so that you can screw that down uh, the rear seats or something like that. If that's your preference, you've got the, all the options available there. Depending on where you wanna put them and whether you want them to be permanently installed is going to be up to you. If you do, I would recommend going to your local hardware and getting a bracket like this. These are a maker bracket. And the idea with these is they already line up to your existing holes here. You can use these brackets as well if you prefer. And the idea is that these can be bent in a vise or what have you to any shape that you want. So the idea is you can kind of bend that to where you need it to bolt into something like a seat bolt or something like that underneath where you're installing. So you can get this guy hard mounted into position. Now for me, I wanna be able to remove these. So I don't want these to be a permanent fixture because we've got things like a cape trip coming up later on this year and different camping. And I wanna be able to, if I'm coming up to some crazy water crossings because I'm installing it under the, under the front seats, I wanna have the flexibility of removing them. So the way that I'm going to go is actually using some extreme heavy duty Velcro. And this stuff's designed to stick to all sorts of stuff. In our case, carpet underneath our front seats. I know that sounds a little bit weird, but it gives me the option to remove this on both sides very easily. I can just pull out our harness here on the side, lift this up, unvelcro everything, and remove the sub without too much drama. And here we go, we've got both of our units here ready to go. And the final bit we need to do from a wiring perspective is where to earth it. Now this is very much gonna depend on you and your install and where you're putting it. You're gonna to wanna to find a bit of a bolt that is bolted into the body ideally. So it's a, you know, you have a really good earth point. If you are going behind the seat, there's lots of options there. And once again, depending on your vehicle. Now for us, going into the D-Max and going under the front seats, what I'm going to be using is up underneath here, there is a bolt right there under the front seats. It is a 12 millimeter, I believe, maybe a 13, but basically that's a bolt that clamps the seat to the seat rail, which is then bolted to the car. So from here, for me, it's to bolt our earth into position. We can then trim up the remainder of our cable here. We don't need as much of that blue, so I'm gonna trim that short and just heat shrink that all so it's nice and protected. 
But everything else, once you've got it all nice and tucked away under your carpets, you can reinstall your car mats and get ready to give these guys a test. And here we go, we're all buttoned up. This is our left sub and our right sitting over there. So we're all tucked up. We've made sure we've used our protection there for all of our bits of wire and what have you, a couple of little zippy ties and that kind of thing. Of course, over the top of this, we've got our floor mats as well. So everything is nice and tucked away. The seat comes sort of back to here. You can't even see, and we've got a good bit of room underneath for your feet as well. So that's the uh, that's the go there. They're all ready to go. I think from here, the only thing left we've got to do is to get this guy all buttoned up, get the car mats back in, and then let's take this out for a test. Right, so here we are. We are out and about, and I reckon it's time we do a little bit of a sound test. Now, there will be a full proper sound test with some DB meters and all that sort of stuff. That's in an upcoming video, so subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss out on that. But let's give you a bit of a sound test. Now, just quickly, there's a couple of things with this. It's If you're listening on your phone, you're probably not gonna hear anything different. If you really wanna hear this, make sure you're playing through some headphones or something like that. I am gonna switch over to a different type of mic. This is a Rode VMI Pro, so it's gonna pick up the sound a little bit better. And then finally, I, ca I can't go playing any sort of regular music because YouTube absolutely doesn't like that. I'll get copyright striked and all sorts of stuff and the video taken down. So I've just got a couple of tunes uh, sitting here that I own licenses to. So I'm just gonna play those. I'll shut up now. I'll crank these both down. I've got the two little two little bass level sort of sitting underneath here. So I'll crank these all the way down and then basically we'll just, we'll just crank them all the way up. And so you can kind of hopefully hear the difference between the two. It's like they're not even... music. No bass. Ooh. Oh yeah. Even halfway. Of a different style again. Turned right off. Nothing going on here. It just sounds so different. One. Even just one sounds awesome. So there you go. Hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea. But there you have it guys. Hopefully that gave you a little bit of an idea around what these guys sound like there all installed all ready to go you can see with the floor mats that i'm using these are the max liners they work pretty well in the fact that they kind of cover up everything here and give a nice little little kick panel if you get feet underneath there or anything like that so i hope the video was helpful if you're looking to install some of the kicker hs10s into your rig subscribe to the channel hit the bell so you make sure you get notified when the sound test video comes out massive thank you to the patrons of video show me how guys your extra support as always massive thank you but other than that guys as always i hope that you have an amazing day and i will see you in the next video cheers guys